All right, we got our next load. We got to get up there real quick because we're supposed to be there by two and it's already 11. And where is it? It's go, we're going to Warren, Arkansas, which is 115 miles of deadhead. So we've got to really book it if we're going to get there on time. Uh, yeah, that's the place. Trip. Plan a new trip. All right, I'll see you when we get there. So we're on our way to Warren, Arkansas. I'm actually having to use Google to, to route us there for because Trucker Path was just taking a weird route. I don't know what the route was, but it was a weird one. Um, so I'm, I'm going to trust Google on this and hope she doesn't get us into trouble. <laughs> uh, Google is saying we're 115 miles away and we'll be there by 1.30. So that gives us ample time to get there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug the route into the trucker path again and let her help navigate at least. Yeah, no way. Trucker path is all, all sorts of messed up on this one. Saying the minimum route is three and a half hours and it'll take 158 miles to get there. So something is screwed up with trucker path. Um, it is not doing its job finding, finding good routes. So I'm going to go with Google, and I will see you on the other side. It's kind of nasty weather. Hopefully we don't run into any issues. So I talked to my dispatcher. Um, I don't know why. I Trucker Path is telling me a route that's like 160 miles long. I installed Hammer, which I use occasionally as kind of a backup, uh, and it was telling me 198 miles. So both truck GPSs are trying to send me on a wild, wild route. Google's got it down, um, so I called my dispatcher just to see, just so, you know, to ask him to kind of look it up in his system, see if he can find any truck uh, issues, restrictions, um, and he's got a slightly different route than Google, but not extremely different, uh, that has no restrictions, so we're just kind of winging it. <laughs> Obviously, one of the one of the places that Google was telling me to get off was on US 35, which his route didn't go that way. Um, I don't know. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be on I'm I'm on State Road. I guess this is Mississippi One that we're on right now. Um, we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. But uh, once we meet up with US 278, then I'm going to try and plug it back into the into both of the. Uh, buck, buck, I'm going to try and plug it back into Trucker Path, see if it's kind of on the same path as Google. At that point, I don't know. I'm winging it. Hopefully, we get there with no issues. But I'll let you know if we don't. <laughs> well, good news. I just plugged the route back into Trucker Path. 
um, from our current location, uh, which is still on US 1 or, or Mississippi State, uh, State Road 1, and it now matches up to uh, the correct distance at least. And I don't know if it's got the same exact route as Google, uh, but at least it has the, the right distance. And it's telling us we're going to get there about 140, which is just fine. Um, we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, another little interesting oddity is when I was plugging it in um, at the very beginning of this route, it could not find our final destination. Of course, I usually have a little bit more time to monkey around with it and be able to, to, to look up the GPS location and plug it in by that, but uh, I, didn't ha I didn't take the time that time, this time around. I will have to wait until we're docked and getting loaded before I figure out exactly how we're going to get to our final destination. But uh, it, it, it feels like we're back on track. Um, we were obviously almost two hours late, or actually we were two hours late to our delivery on the previous load. Um, partially because I overslept, but I didn't oversleep two hours. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know why we were so late. We did get off to a late start leaving the yard yesterday um, when we headed out to, to do that pickup. But, uh, and we kind of got delayed briefly. I don't know. I'll talk about yesterday's load on yesterday's video. <laughs> so I'll just have to edit something in. Uh, but uh, we're on track, back the way I like to be, and we've got a good truck route. So I'll see you when we get there.
have arrived. Do I check in here? I don't see anybody in there. I'm going to stop here. All right, I'm going to run inside, get checked in. Hopefully, I, I think we're at the right place. The, the address is correct, but the name is different. But it is a hard work place, so I think we're in the right place. But I'm going to have to go inside and find out. Well, I got a little nasty look from the guy when I got there. He's like, nope, you're late. And I'm like, no, he told me till 2. And it's only one one thirty-five, so we're on time. Let me get my doors open in tandem slid since I'm already wet and uh, we'll get docked. Nasty weather today. And there we go. at uh, hardwood so yeah I forgot to take the little microphone thing in the jig out uh, that's why you couldn't hear me before all righty so pretty much to the back but it's down low I did not check to see what the weights were but it is nasty weather seal in here. You know they're lucky you get to watch this from the comfort of your dry wherever it is you are while I get moist. And I need both hands to do this for some reason. Doesn't want to get up in there. There we go. <laughs> All righty. Pop our tandems. And let's get inside in the truck where it is dry. Or at least drier. <sighs> I've been having trouble getting the uh, route program into the GPS because I don't have any signal. Alright. They're saying that this load weighs only 17,000 pounds? 27,000. I don't know. Let's see. we got two POs. One of them is 17.5. The other is 10, 7, so what's that, 27, 28 and change? That's actually not all that bad. That would explain why it didn't feel like they were really uh, slamming me around very much back there. Um, I'm going to move them out here.
here at the side. Might help if I release the brakes. Pull over here to the side and I'm gonna continue fighting with my GPS to get it programmed in. <laughs> See you in a few. Alrighty, so we are loaded. We are slid. We have the GPS programmed. It took a little effort. Um, the trucker path just was not wanting to find a route. Hammer didn't have enough signal to find a route. Um, we're just not in a good area for doing anything. Uh, but we are underway now, and I'm going to stop at the first truck stop to come to because I've got to use the Banyo. And everything's all messed up. Uh, uh, once we get to where we're going, or once we get to the first stop that I can stop at and get some stop, I got some fixing the things to do. See you then. Splish splash, I was taking a bath all along a Saturday night. That was a puddle. All right, so we are at the Loves in Chasm, Arkansas. I think that's the name of the place. Um, but uh, I got here intending just to stop in youth facilities and grab some, grab some grub. But when I looked at my clock, we've only got two hours left on the clock. And then I took a second look at the, uh, the load. It doesn't deliver till Monday. And it's only at this point a thousand miles away. So uh, we've got a couple of light days in front of us. I don't want to run. I'm not going to take a 34. There's no sense in taking a 34 this, this soon out. We've only been back on the road. Today is the second day. Uh, and yesterday we only drove like four hours. So um, we, haven't, we haven't burned off enough of our 70 hour clock to make any sense out of taking a 34 this weekend. So I'm just gonna run and take it easy this weekend, do 500 miles tomorrow and 500 miles on Sunday, and then we'll be there um, Monday morning with plenty of time to spare. Uh, so I'm just gonna stay here tonight and go inside. I've still got plenty of shower credits left over from when I was at rail and uh, which was months ago. I don't know how long do those shower credits last because I've got tons of them. I've got like 113 shower credits. Um, <laughs> and I haven't driven for rail in, since November. So I don't know how long those things last, but I got tons of them. And uh, there's no sense driving any further tonight. We're parked up. We're in a good spot. Uh, so, yep. I felt a little bit flustered today. Um, I think it was because we were running late this morning and we were in a rush and everything's been rushed. Um, we had to get to our pickup before they closed at two. And so we were rushing to get out of our last delivery to our pickup and everything was just flustering. Um, hurried not done in a relaxed manner and so I am uh, yeah I'm feeling it but uh, I got me some chicken this this particular loves has a Chester's so I got some, a four piece dark meat and something to drink and uh, yeah I'm just gonna sit here take my time have a good meal uh, and I'm gonna go inside and get a shower and I will see y'all tomorrow good morning YouTube so it is uh, Saturday morning we are on day two of our trip to I'm not sure if I ever actually said where we were going we're going to uh, Minersville Pennsylvania and uh, we've got about a thousand miles left to go. We started out yesterday with uh, 1178 miles from our pickup, uh, but it took us almost 200 miles to find a truck stop that we could even just pull into to use the bathroom, and then I just decided to stay here for the night. 
Uh, we're not going to go very far today. We're going to go about only 500 miles because we've got until Monday morning to deliver this load, Monday 9 a.m. to deliver this load, and we've only got 1,000 miles left to go. So I'm going to do about 500 miles a day, uh, which will land us somewhere around Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, we've got a fuel stop on route in Gordonsville, Tennessee. Um, I think we got plenty of fuel to get there. It's not a very heavy load. It's only about 28,000 pounds, so we should be able to make good time. Um, get to fuel with uh, plenty of room to spare and uh, get, then get to our parking. I do want to stop at a Walmart somewhere along the way. I need to get a vacuum cleaner or something to help me clean the mess that is this truck. It was not really particularly clean when it got to me. Um, <coughs> but uh, and, and so I need to really get some of the, the dirt and grime out of here so I'm going to pick something up um, and I need to get a few supplies as well. Uh, so we'll find a Walmart somewhere in route and uh, stop in there. If worst case scenario, I know that uh, there's a pilot in Knoxville. If we get there and stay there tonight, um, then I can order Walmart delivery, uh, which I've done before from that location. Uh, but uh, I, I'll, I'll probably just stop somewhere in route. It's easier and cheaper. Um, so uh, it's about 6:20 right now. I have not yet done my pre-trip. Uh, I'm about to get it started. I did I did go inside and get some breakfast and some some supplies, but uh, yeah, let's roll. Since we're not in any real rush, I figured I will uh, invite y'all along on my pre-trip this morning. So this is not going to be a thorough, you know, check every nook and cranny, make sure every little thing has no dense cracks leaks whatever inspection this is my daily walk around i mean once you're on a truck when you're an ota otr driver and you spend every day all day every day on the same truck with the same trailer you kind of figure out what is and isn't in rough shape and needs to be looked at so we start out i just kind of walk around check my lights i'm doing a light check we've got to make sure everything's working um uh, yep all the front lights are working um, then I'll pop the hood and of course this company doesn't do the best job with making sure that the equipment is well maintained but I do want to make sure that my tires are in good shape have plenty of tread depth this one's I mean it's it's still good for a while but uh, it's lower than I would prefer it to be uh, make sure the belts are all right, good. Looking for any kind of major leaks, anything that jumps out at me. I'll get in there. I don't know if y'all can see, but I checked the brakes. Oops. Uh, make sure the camera's still working. I knocked it. Hopefully, y'all still have a good view. I kind of bumped the camera and probably knocked it off kilter a little bit. A little bit. Uh, And on this side, I check the fluid levels, make sure the fuel filter is clean. I just kind of give this a little tug and a little jerk, make sure it's all good and everything's in place. That water is probably from last night. I don't see any signs of actual oil leakage. Um, it was raining yesterday, which is why my wipers are still on. Um, I didn't run the engine last night had a good night's sleep. I haven't started the engine yet this morning. There is actually plenty of oil in here. Sometimes I will put a rag to it and kind of clean that off, but uh, that's probably actually too much oil considering I haven't run the engine all night. Um, but he had it serviced recently at a freight liner, so I seriously doubt they put too much oil in there. Um, but I'm actually going to get a rag and wipe that down, see if it's See if there's anything I can do about that. I also get my hammer out so I can go thump all the tires. I'll put the hammer over here while we wait while we do this. And really I'm just kind of looking for anything that's abnormal. And that was an abnormal fluid level. But, uh, there's a light. That, that looks a lot better. It 
Check the brakes. Looks good. And keep in mind it is well above freezing, so there's a lot of stuff that uh, you might have issues with if it has frozen up over the night. Um, I will occasionally, not every day, I'm bad about it, release the air and just kind of listen to see if there's any water, water coming out of there. Something's wrong with these cables. This is the first time I've done this with this truck. But yeah, there's nothing coming out. There's no water in the in the airlines. Yeah, I won't bleed them all the way out because there's no real point when the temperatures are good like this. Make sure my airlines are all still hooked up. I just kind of look around, see if there's anything that needs looking at. Check my fuel cap, make sure it's still on there. Uh, make sure our Kingpin is still locked because there are some unscrupulous individuals out there that uh, will pull your kingpin just to, to mess with you. Uh, make sure my landing gear is up. All the hoses are in good shape, not dragging. Now, it's kind of hard to do with this helmet on my head or with the camera on my head, but I will usually, let's see if I can get in there, get in and check between the tires. Make sure there's nothing caught in between them. Make sure all the lights are working. Inside, outside, okay. Check the seal. those lights are working I don't see any oil spray or anything like that brakes are good on this side brakes are good on that side This truck definitely needs a wash. Doesn't need it as bad as my last truck did. Uh, it was filthy. But I've actually been approved to get this, instructed even, to get this truck a wash at some point. So maybe we'll go through a, a wash bay tomorrow and uh, get that done. It takes too long to go through and get a, a wash on a busy day. But, uh, we got such a light schedule and tomorrow is not a bad day this truck it's a little harder to get this latch to latch one-handed By the way, in case you didn't notice, I did a lousy job parking last night. I pulled through and I was only intending to be here for maybe 10, 15 minutes long enough to go in and use the bathroom and grab some food. And then I changed my mind and decided I would stay. And by the time I got out to my truck again, everybody around me was already parked. So I apologize to them for not uh, parking properly, but at that point there was it was kind of pointless. Um, alrighty, so like I said, that is my typical daily walk around pre-trip. That is not a thorough pre-trip by any stretch of the imagination. Um, wipers are working because, like I said, once you've been on a truck long enough, you get to know 
all the issues it's having. Um, and I will usually do a very thorough pre-trip on my 34 um, and go around and really check everything. Uh, but uh, and I did a fairly fairly thorough check out when I first got into the truck. So and the boss was right there with me that we could talk about things in real time. Uh, but uh, okay, I think that is good for now. Um, time to hit the road, shall we? See you soon. Somebody had a bad day. Yikes. Alrighty, folks well our walmart stop is complete as is our 30 minute break and then some uh, i think we've been here around an hour or so <laughs> uh, let's find out turn on the eld and let's find out uh, i don't even know um but we've been here a fair bit an hour and 43 minutes <laughs> so uh uh Let's get on out of here. We've got a fuel stop in about 20 miles. And then we got to find parking for the night.
and I want to stop somewhere in the vicinity of Knoxville, which I think will be a good place. That's about 500 miles for the day. Maybe we'll go a little bit further um, beyond Knoxville and find some place nice and quiet and uh, have a good night. So let's get us out of this Walmart. If you're not familiar with Walmart's relationship with trucking, uh, for a long time they were excellent places to park for the night. Uh, but uh, over the last, I don't know how many years, that uh, is no longer the case. Uh, a lot of them still do allow overnight parking, and a lot of them are still great for overnight parking, uh, but it's more hit and miss than it ever used to be. Um, as I've heard it, the main reason for that is that originally the uh, Walmarts were all built on land owned by Walmart. And the guy that founded Walmart is very truck friendly and is uh, and, and specifically built the Walmarts and intended for the Walmarts to be truck friendly. But over the years, the properties that they were building the Walmarts on stopped being, they started leasing from, from landowners and leasing from other property owners. And those property owners are not quite as Walmart friend or trucker friendly. So a lot of the newer Walmarts are built on places where the landowner or the property owner does not want truckers to park overnight. Um, either for liability reasons or because truckers have a bad habit of leaving their trash all over the place. Um, not all truckers, obviously. Good truckers do not leave their trash all over the place, but bad truckers do. Uh, so the pressure was it's a bad reputation and it's resulted in us not being able to park. <laughs> It's resulted in us not being able to park at Walmarts anymore. Um, so screw all you truckers that leave your trash laying around. Clean up after yourself, you filthy truckers. Um, but anyways, I'm working on getting out here on the street, and it's kind of on the busy side, so it may take a minute. <sighs> but anyways. So that's why we can't always park it at Walmarts. But this one that I was at, that I went shopping at, did have overnight parking allowed, had ample room to get in and out of there. Although I would love it if this little exit here had a drop light because that would eliminate this weight. Well, maybe not eliminate it, but at least uh, make it not so bad. because there's traffic coming from both directions. I need to go left out of here. And there's just a lot of cars coming. Just a second. Alrighty. And I can't quite get all the way over into the lane I want to be in, but fortunately we've got this turn lane.
moving, shall we? Y'all, something is up with Trucker Path. Um, it has been giving me trouble nonstop since we came out this week. Um, there must have been a system update or something uh, that is causing it. But basically, it keeps freezing up um, while I'm in route. Or it'll think that we're not where we are and, you know, it'll have to reroute. It'll reroute. Going through Nashville, it was miserable. Because going through Nashville, it tried to reroute us about 20 times. Fortunately, we were just going on I-40 and it was a straight shot. And, well, as straight as Nashville can be going through there. Um, but uh, we weren't leaving I-40, let's put it that way. Uh, but uh, Trucker Path is just was just not... Uh, doing its job it was just trying to direct us all over tarnation and uh, so I tried switching to hammer just to see if uh, that solved the problem and of course the problem trucker path was having does not ha is not happening in uh, in hammer so basically trucker path is is either just losing its position altogether or it is uh, enforcing a reroute, or it's just freezing up and not knowing, you know, where we're at, uh, not having accurate now coordinates, or not having up-to-date coordinates. Uh, so it makes Trucker Path hard to work with right at the moment. I can't get out of here, but he is going to hold traffic for me. That was nice of him. U.S. Express. Shout out to you. Or no, that was a USA truck, not U.S. Express. But anyway, so Trucker Path is having trouble staying up to date or staying uh, having accurate uh, position information. But at least the routing is is halfway decent. Uh, but uh, Hammer doesn't have that issue but its route suck it uh, it sent us off the wrong exit to get to that pilot back there sent us off an exit that doesn't have a pilot doesn't have any kind of a access to that pilot I don't know what it was trying to do when I looked at the when I looked at the route it was all sorts of confused so at the moment we don't have a real good uh, truck GPS working for us I don't have my, I had a Rand McNally uh, truck GPS for years and it finally died back late last year and I haven't replaced it um, because Trucker Path has been working absolutely fine until this week. So I don't know what's going on. I'm not liking it. I'm going to have to bitch to their tech support, most likely, and see what's going on there. But, uh, yeah, I may wind up, if this doesn't solve itself soon, um, most likely it was just a software update and there's a, there's a glitch in the software that's causing the problem. But if that doesn't get fixed in a real big hurry, I'm going to be forced to buy a another either a Rand McNally I might try a Garmin I've never used a Garmin um, you know I wasn't super thrilled with the Rand McNally I don't really like the hardware uh, but the software is good unfortunately I can't get Rand McNally software on a, on a regular Android device it has to be on their Rand McNally hardware which sucks Rand McNally if you're listening release an Android version of your of your software it would be worth the price tag but you won't do they're, they're not doing that they want to sell their crappy hardware um, so yeah I might might purchase a Garmin and try that out for the next couple of years <laughs> as expensive as they are that's a that's a couple year purchase that's not, a, that's not one of those throwaways. I do not yet have 
a destination dialed in for us for stopping. I think I'm just going to get north of Knoxville and uh, then we'll see where we stop for the night. See you soon. Well, we are at the Flying J. I think this is a Flying J. Um, one near Lenore City that we've stayed at before. I like this place, but I've not ever seen it this crowded. Of course, I don't recall ever coming in here at 5.30, 6 o'clock on a Saturday. Um, what I can tell you is there's a lot of drop trailers in here, which tells me there's a lot of local drivers that are parking here. Um, I hate that. I hate it when local drivers tie up spots. Um, I get it. You know, you got to park somewhere. And you can't always park at your house. but it reduces the availability of parking. And so we're sitting here, it's kind of tight. Um, I've had to sit and wait for multiple drivers now to get parked. And why did that guy just bail? He was in there. Why did he quit? I don't know. <laughs> he had a spot. And he just gave up on it. Well, I'm going to take that spot because it was a perfectly good spot. I'm going to try and take that spot. Yeah. See how easy this is going to be? That guy was in there and just bailed for no damn reason. <laughs> Maybe it's on a slope or something. I don't know. good all right so I guess he pulled out because he decided to move to the other side for some reason that's weird oh well um, I made him wait but he was in a perfectly good spot uh, it is a little bit on the slope to the wrong side I guess if you be in particular maybe that might do it but it looks like the spot that he's barked back and into is the same way so that couldn't have been it. Uh, anyways, we're parked for the night. Oops, got to put myself off duty. And uh, we're just gonna hang out here. They've got a Denny's here, so I'm gonna go and, I don't know that I'll have dinner, but I'll probably have breakfast hit there in the morning. Uh, but I'm gonna go inside, get a shower, and get ready for bed. And then I'm gonna come back out here and edit some videos. See you in the morning.